in Zambia comes in, in Malawi, another way to come, the telephone is here. Then uh, we come to Argentina, Tanzania, our neighbors, our 102, in the whole world. Actually, they are, they are somehow well, uh, 100 in uh, zero 01. And then we, now they have been put by two steps, but by us two there, so they are falling by another people. And then that is about. Okay. Well, you are waiting, are you? Okay. So there you are. So Uganda, in 08, it was the 158th, most, only 158th part of country. I mean, the last point. 158, that is, it, that was its rank, out of about 160 something. Okay. <laughs> so it, we, we, we were doing very well also. <laughs> in 08, so in 2011, we improved to 143, or 143rd position. Now, as we talk now, we occupy a position of 130 in the whole world. Okay. So in other words, you can say, I don't know, you can say you are 130th most proud. You have to begin from down if you want to look the most corrupt. Because number one is the least corrupt. Okay? Or you can say one thirtieth the least corrupt country. And then that's you got one thirty. Uh, out of a total of one seventy-four. Okay? So if you want to know how corrupt you have to begin from one seventy-four and then move what? They are backwards. So at the moment, the most corrupt countries in the world we have Somalia, uh, North Korea, and Afghanistan. Those have the same position, the same rank. But the most corrupt countries in the world. And at least that will come from transparency donation. There are several other data sources that you can increase uh, corruption. There is World Bank, Robert, uh, rather, governance indicators, it's another data source. World Bank, then you have another, another source is the um, PRS, that is a political risk service. This also gives better on corruption in all, in all, in all countries. Okay? Well, I have some of the data series, but then it is in zero nine. So, what are the causes of corruption? What are talking Now, I hear you know, I give a number of them, okay? But generally, uh, structural features that create incentives. I mean, here yeah, I, I give uh, the kind of structure that creates incentives for corrupt behavior. And one of them is a government may allocate, allocate a discussed benefit to individuals and firms using legal criteria other than willingness to pay. Now, this one here, I'm talking about discussed material benefit. Talk about, so talk about, for instance, if there is a commodity that the government wants to extend to, this, to the public, in most cases the government offer this at a lower price than the market price. So in such circumstances, the government offers a good at a lower price than the market price. Talk about maybe medical uh, treatment, in most cases it is offered a lot, at a very low price. So in such a situation, it creates there's that imbalance between the market price and the government price. Now the agents use that opportunity to deal in this government property or government scarce commodity by increasing the what? Increasing the price. So that as bribes clear the market, I mean to remove that gap. So bribes clear at the market. Okay. Then another uh, feature is public officials may have little incentive to do their jobs well because of low pay and inadequate monitoring. Uh, this is one of the major excuses most of us give. I mean, most of us for grant, okay? That government is paying us what? Little. So I have to find some, something good to supplement, okay? But again, bribes, so in other words, here bribes act as what? An incentive. But here, a question must be given that not all incentive pay schemes can improve bureaucratic uh, vote efficiency. Instead, they can encourage inefficient efforts to maximize what? Uh, financial rights. Okay? You can instead increase 
efficiency. Then the next one, that uh, private individuals and firms may seek to lower the cost of taxes or duties and regulation imposed on them by government. Uh, this is one scenario which I gave you which I, which I gave you before. That is corruption with theft. Okay. Whereby, and this is very common what we have with, here with, with custom officials. With the custom officials, where by now the agents want to reduce. I mean, it feel, I mean, the, the private individual feels that what is supposed to pay as tax is very high. So he colludes with the agent to, in order to pay less. Okay, to pay less. So this sort of earlier called corruption with what? With theft. So government receives less than what it's supposed to receive. Okay? Because the individual thinks that the, the fee is very high. And also government may uh, confer large financial benefits on private farms through contracts, privatization and, and concession. Here, our bribes affect the level of monopoly rents and their allocation between private investors and public officials. Uh, for instance, that brands pay to win major contracts and concessions and to private companies are generally the result of the large business and high level officials. So this is very common with contracts in many countries. It's very common where large farms always find their way into winning the world and the contracts. But what you must not hear how does it affect development? How does it affect the economy? These bribes that are paid by these farms don't just go like that. They are part of the sucker costs. So these farms must find a way of recovering these, these costs. They must do that. And this is very, very common with the uh, uh, minerals or oil companies. Actually, oil companies all over the world are not good, the most corrupt. Or even farms that deal with, with minerals, that they are not being very corrupt. Okay, talk about Kutori, uh, uh, yeah, Kutori Gini. In many other countries, okay, they are very, I mean, and of course, the moment they sunk in this money, okay, at the end of the day, they must get back this money. Because I don't know much about the oil contracts, but what I know is that when they are to share with the government, the oil farm must first of all recover their costs and then they, they share the oil. That's why the question is that I'm sharing. All the costs must be recovered. So all these some costs that are in, incurred, which of course don't go to the rest of the people, but you find one or two or three individuals who benefit from this thing here. But then it has to be paid by the rest of the, of the public. Okay? It has to be incurred by the rest of the public. Because you won't realize the profits. I mean, government don't realize the revenue that's supposed to be realized. Simply because the farms are still recovering their sunk costs. So that's one way the problem what we do some reason. Then bribes may substitute for legal forms of political influence. Okay, that's bribery by politicians, buying influence what? And the way of again what? Uh, bribery buying what? <coughs> Vote. So you end up sending somebody to parliament who actually is not supposed to be there. But because he has what? He has the money, he was able to bribe the electorate. Okay? And what do you expect out of such a person? Be there. So another form is that the judiciary may have the power to impose costs and transfer resources between the two guys. You've heard about these cases in Uganda. I think the very recent one was the case where government was really doubting. Was it the 12 billion hour? Recently? 12 billion, some, some, somebody. And government was not very sure whether they had that money was supposed to be. Government should pay that money. And they were suspecting some. Actually, they were smelling the rat somewhere. But I think there's a problem there, you know, in the judiciary. You have heard about cases where the judiciary uh, connived with some agents to steal money from, from, from government. They put a case which they know that would. They just take a case and put it across. And then the judicial awards large sums of money okay, to the litigants. So these are some of the issues. Okay? Because, again, the bribes actually in the, in the same judicial 
can expedite what decisions. This way they make very fast, very quick decisions because they know there's something behind. Okay? Or even influence what? The decisions. Okay? Influence the decisions. So these are some of the issues that um, create incentives for what? <coughs> for bribery. So, and when the judiciary is considered corrupt, it introduces uncertainty into business climate. Laws may not mean much, and those with disputes may avoid going to court unless they are certain they will be the higher bribe. Okay? The existence of imperfect information, especially between the individual and the agent. I mean, the individual, you don't know much, you don't know what you are supposed to pay, you don't know what to get that. So this again can cause some problems. Then the recruitment process. Recruitment process. This is very common in developing countries, and I think in our country, Uganda here. Many people are searching for jobs. Okay. You have the, 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 the papers, you have everything, but then the official first asks you for, for some money before he or she gives you <coughs> the job. Okay. So at the end of the day, you find people who are recruited and those who cannot afford to pay for the job. And those who actually have uh, without merit end up being what? Being left out. So what happens? You are recruiting somebody, you are putting someone in an office where you are not supposed to be. What happens at the end of the day in terms of output? Okay? In terms of output. So these are issues that really affect our nation. Then also another factor is the way the system is making out a structure. You have a high level versus the lower level, the middle, then the lower level. See? So these lower levels are ones which are most likely to be good, to be corrupt. And then the corruption, other externalities, corruption brings corruption. The moment you take a brain, or the moment you give a brain, chances are high that you always want what? to take another brain. Or you always want to quicken things by giving what? Another prime. Okay? So these are some of the issues that we, or you, the, this generation, should, should, should be very, very careful with. The moment you give a bribe, then chances are like that what? You're going to give another one. Or you need to take one. So these are things you should always refrain from. And then, probably that's the social stigma. Okay? To find somebody is approaching 60. In a big office and an office, he has, he was, I mean, at, at that age, he has never driven a car. <laughs> Simply because he can't afford one. Mm -hmm. And then he looks at the juniors below him, all are cruising what? In very powerful machines. Mm -hmm. What happens if they have a change? <coughs> well, so this kind of scenario can also cause what? Someone to be corrupt. You are trying to catch up. With the rest, okay? Try to catch up with the rest. Then here, I talk about, talk about corruption and efficiency. Probably can talk, record this the benefits of what? Of corruption. As if they are there anyway, okay? Now, that uh, here they are really very fifth, and then, that when policy and this situation exists, so in a situation whereby, there are some distortions. Okay. There are distortions. Okay. Then chances of what? I mean, corruption can some, somehow smooth them or break that gap. Okay. Remember in the 70s and the other 80s here, when the goods are being smuggled, I mean, there was some distortion in the country. Production was very low. So what happened? People like it, what? Find their way of bringing what? Goods legally. Okay? Then, uh, the most part of what is in three, are the clients with different time preferences are subject to price discrimination practices through the use of uh, speed money. Somehow, this helps reduce the delays and helps one to get ahead of what? Slow moving queues. I'm talking about a situation whereby uh, you are using your money to jump the what? The queue. 
Okay? I think you are money to, to jump the queue. You are, I mean, you, your time value is what is very high. Okay? So it, all the value for you, your time is very high. So you need to you, you use the money to jump the queue. Because you think that it's playing you. But the problem with such a, with such a thing, you, much as it is, you're using your money to whatever, is that it may again cause unnecessary delays. Or the agency themselves may actually not bring in what? Unnecessary delays. Because they expect those who are out, who are time bad to come out and pay them off. You can't spend much time on benefits because they are really almost not there. And let's talk about the cost of corruption. As I told you earlier, my discussion is going to be general. Then we can pick out, if any, for our country in But generally, it's the same. Now, the cost of corruption, they are paid money. And shall look at some of you. One is corruption discourages entrepreneurship. Okay, for instance, corruption may dampen small scale businesses, and this group has a comparative disadvantage. You need to pay fees. So consider a scenario whereby these small businesses are supposed to keep bribing the set of registration offices, blah blah and so forth, for them to start up what? Their businesses. First of all, they have business capital because they are small businesses. So at the end of the day, they will simply pull out. So what happens to the entrepreneurship? Then employment. So the, the firms that would have come up to create employment now pull out because they are not able to, to pay. Now, corruption can also discourage product investment. And there is a little empirical study on this. And that's one of them is my personal study with my other colleagues, where we look at uh, institutional FBI and institution in East Africa. Uh, I'll be very brief, I'll show you that slide briefly. Um, just to give you the empirical results of that. We had a model, that was the model. We don't want to spend much time on that. Let's look at the results. The results here are uh, corruption. Uh, you look at that corruption and you see those stars. The study she shows that it is okay, this, this model is basically about FDI, what the determinants of FDI to East Africa. There are a number of them, but I'm only picking up out what the corruption. There are several other variables up. And if you look at the, uh, the corruption variable, it is significant. Meaning that uh, corruption does affect what? FDI influence. Okay? To many countries. So in other words, corruption, as we are saying, uh, leads to what? Less FDI or discredit FDI. Then also, like, there is a loss of allocative efficiency. Okay, and natural resources go to individuals who do not deserve them. Okay, so the rest of the, of the citizens do not actually benefit from what from the would be revenue because only one, two, three people are taking up what for the money. Okay, the low production. Okay, low production and low economic growth. With, with, with the low production here, don't import a number of things. It can be even in the administration or even anyway, where you find that uh, those that are occupying a particular office are actually not built to be there. So those who feel that they are, I mean, those who feel that they are supposed to be there, they become disrupted. And what happens to their output? Okay? It can be either in the army, it can be in, 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 in an institution, okay, an institution whereby the promotions or appointments are done on a particular line, it can be tribe, it can be religion. I'm seeing this in my institution somewhere, whereby if you are 
not to go to the train, you know, we're promoting. I'm talking for what I know. So what happens to output? So those who actually feel they're supposed to be somewhere, they become disrupted and even their output load. Oh, their, their, their productivity definitely load. It is happening. I'm not going to go deep into that. Okay? Otherwise, production may be affected by those who actually feel they're supposed to be somewhere and somebody is sitting on them or blocking out their promotions simply because of some factor here and there. Okay? Unless you belong to a particular road. Okay? Particular road ever. So, this method will affect the cost of the output. And actually it is. Okay? Corruption causes the capital flight. It's very dangerous for Africa. Very, very dangerous for Africa. But the capital that flies out of Africa is much more than the A that you get. Much more than the A that we get. If you talk about West Africa in particular, the amount of money living in West Africa to Europe and the US is in billions. It's in billions. A lot of money is living in Africa. So you may ask yourself, why is Africa not developing? I say, because if you have tried to be some other country, and you ask yourself, with all these resources, what's happened to Africa? Money that comes to Africa, leaves Africa almost immediately. Before it even arrives in another world, left. They're losing a lot of money to other countries. Okay? So you've been following the 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 good example issue of what about of Zaire. What's happening now? These oil producing countries in West Africa. Okay? It's terrible. It's really terrible. Capital flight is too much in, in Africa. Then uh, corruption leads to fiscal deficit. Okay, leads to fiscal deficit. Uh, this is very common when, especially when uh, an agent is supposed to to transact things on behalf of government. So you talk about importing some some technology or importing somewhat some things for the country. Okay. So what happens here? The agent, of course, is going to inflate. But to inflate the amount of money that the country is supposed to pay for that commodity. Now, by inflating, means that the country has to part with much more money than it's supposed to, to do. So what happens? Revenue versus expenditure. Expenditure should serve, and revenue is what? It's falling. Hence, a deficit. How do you close the deficit? From simple economics, you either have to tax more, so you can see how many are now suffering. One person ate the money, then the rest are taxed much more to close the gap. Or you have to borrow. Now you're talking about foreign currency. We're inflating foreign currency. Okay? So the foreign currency which is going out is a lot more. What happens to the currency? Uh, well, they accelerate. Together. Accelerate what? Rises. Now, by rising, the same country you are importing goods and services. So you go to buy, you as an importer, not an importer, you, not, you now go and buy the dollars at a higher rate. Okay? So that you can go and import goods and import from there. Now, if you are buying goods at a higher rate, what happens to the final price that I want to sell the goods? It has to right. So, one person is bring, all, bring about inflation. In the country, okay, because government had to part with a lot of money, bring about a gap, the cigarette rises, you import goods at a higher price, and then therefore you have to sell them a lot at a higher price. Okay, so bring about inflation. Then corruption, this is the uh, ratio of investment to GDP, something you mentioned that I talked about some earlier, about entrepreneurship and also. What FBI. Okay. Now we talk about policies issues to reduce corruption. Here I talk about several of them. But generally, anti-corruption efforts should limit public official opportunities for corruption and increase increase the benefits of being honest. 
and the cost of being corrupt. Okay? Increase the benefit of being honest and the cost of being corrupt. And so I think it's time that time is, is catching up. Um, below, I, I propose, I talk about some few points, not proposed, but these are going to be proposed earlier in some about presentations. One is to impose stiff penalties. The penalty to the corrupt must be very stiff. Lucky enough, I swear I had recently that the government is trying to, to include a scenario whereby if somebody is found corrupt, then they have to sell out. I don't know how far this has gone. They have to sell your assets to get back in out the money. So there are some of these penalties that, that should be imposed. Oh, you go to jail for some good number of years. Okay? So penalties must be stiff. Then also establish and strengthen the anti-corruption bureau. Okay? This should be, should be, we have several of them in Uganda, but they have to be a strength thing. In the sense that they have to be active. Okay? Then increase the incentives for single servants. This is not a guarantee, however. Incentives they are talking about, if, 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 if the judges or if the single servants say that their pay is low, then government should not think about it. Of course, this is a guarantee. Anyway, then plead with the values and norms. This is where I lie, personally. Okay? Personally, that's where I lie. And I would urge many of you to join the way, to plead with the values. If you like the money you're taking belongs to government, leave it. If the money doesn't belong to you, don't take it. Okay, these are all the issues. The generation is saying no. I don't have to catch <laughs> I said no, we also have to catch up. Okay. No, you cannot always catch up without the word, without being corrupt. You cannot always catch up without being corrupt. Many have succeeded, and I, I, I bet you can also succeed without being corrupt. So don't think that you have to, to gain you are in one year, you are driving, you have your house. These are some of the things that he, the youth have in mind. If I get a job within one year, I'm driving and I have to have a house. No. You stick to it, the values and norms. Okay? And reduce the monopoly power of these agents. Okay? This one has been put about sugar privatization and depolarization and so forth. Then reduce the discretion powers of government officials. I hear, say, for instance, I remove the yes, almost the same thing, privatization, reducing of bureaucracy and the government institutions. Okay? And of course here, yeah, one thing also to reduce what, that with the bureaucracy, you are talking about having so many steps before you get something. An investor comes and is supposed to pass through about 10 channels before you get a, a license. So those ch 10 channels are definitely, there must be someone where you ask what, you need a pain. So remove all these channels. Okay? It, 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 it happens in, in Mexico. Okay, the about 16 channels, or at least 23. So there's so many channels, there's so many bureaucracies you have in between something. Definitely, you are increasing the power of, of these fellows to be corrupt. Okay? So reduce the bureaucracy. Okay? See this one, and you see the other one, see the other one. That one is one of the major causes of corruption, bureaucracy in the system. Okay? Then enforcing anti-corruption laws. This is very important. You should just have the law and they are not what? Working. The law must, must be the law and it has to work and it should work. It should be seen that it is working. Okay? So uh, the country that is serious about reform must also have effective agencies to investigate and prosecute corruption. And an independent judiciary, that's not itself. 